please stand as we sing our processional hymn. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I trust the lunch was good. <laughs> so welcome to our service 
of thanksgiving and farewell to Reverend Adrian as he concludes his ministry here among us. A special welcome to all those who have come to support Father, uh, especially his own family and friends. Uh, also a special welcome to the Reverend Richard Dunstan from just down the road. It's good to see all of you here. Dear people of God, like every community of faith, Good Shepherd Anglican Church in Grassy Park is growing and constantly changing. Loved ones come and go throughout the life of our parish. Clergy come and go with a poignancy that mixes joy, sadness, and thanksgiving. We recognize these times of endings and beginnings. Today, we share the time of farewell with Reverend Adrian, whose time as our assistant priest is coming to an end. And so we take a moment to celebrate, to reflect, and to give thanks. We sit now as the choir leads us in the singing of the psalm. The lesson is written in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, and I read from verse 17. From Miletus, he sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they came to him, he said to them, you yourselves know how I lived among you the entire time from the first day that I set foot in Asia serving the Lord with all humility and with tears. 
enduring the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly and from house to house, as I testify to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus. And now, as a captive to the Spirit, I'm on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself if, I, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you among you whom have, I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. Therefore, I declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some, even from your own group, will come to distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the message of his grace a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this, I have given you an example that by such work, we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus for himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said, that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. Here ends the lesson. When someone who faithfully serves God in a local church you know, when that happens, something remarkable actually takes place. And I think if we reflect on the last 19 months that the Reverend Adrian has been with us, I think we know that something remarkable has really taken place here amongst us. It happened with Paul in Ephesus. And I think it's also what's happening here in our church, as I said. Reverend Aidan arrived here or was licensed on the 9th, the 9th of November in 2021. And when he came here, um, we were still very much in the throes of COVID. And despite that, he inserted himself into our church. And as we slowly navigated our way out of COVID, we could see him coming to light. We could see him blossoming. He, of course, is my 12th assistant. Can you believe it? He's also my youngest assistant. I doubt we will probably have any younger ones than him. <laughs> but if we go to the text this afternoon, as part of his third missionary journey, Paul stayed in Ephesus. And we are told in the text that he lived there for about three years. And God used him while he was there. And the church in Ephesus had been marked by his ministry. They knew him. He lived among them. He was their pastor. He was their brother. He was their friend. He was their fellow worker. And so in our text today, he calls the leaders of the Ephesian church for one last talk, knowing that he'd never see them again. And I think that in many ways, even though I'm sure we'll see Father again sometime, we're experiencing some of the same emotions as a church. 
And thankfully, Reverend Adrian isn't going too far. And we will definitely see him again. But we know what it's like to be marked by someone's ministry and then experience some of the emotions that come with his departure. And I think that when we reflect on the text this afternoon, the passage actually leaves us with two things that Reverend Adrian takes with him and two things that we get to send with him. The first thing is that he's leaving with a good track record. Isn't that so? You'll agree with me, no? Yeah. I mean, in the same way Paul was able to look back on his ministry, he was able to reflect on his ministry among them with the knowledge that he had served God faithfully and that he had also served the congregation well. And when we go through the reading, he, spe he specifically lists four qualities of his ministry that marked his faithfulness. And I believe that in the same way, those are the same qualities that have marked Reverend Adrian's ministry here among us. The first quality is that Paul served God selflessly. And so we read in the text, you yourselves know how I lived among you the entire time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears. And we know the tears, don't we? <laughs> Enduring the trials that came to me through the plot of the Jews. And so I think when we reflect on the text in terms of Paul, what is it saying to us? It's saying to us that Paul served the Lord. He was subservient, even when it involved humility and tears and trials. And one of the marks of a faithful ministry is knowing that you don't belong to yourself, that you belong to God, and that your primary desire is to please God. As we heard this morning in our sermon, that we need to find our identity in Christ. And that characterized Paul's ministry, and I believe it also characterizes Father Adrian's ministry. The second quality is that Paul preached the word faithfully. And so we read on. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly and from house to house. As I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus. Therefore, I declare to you this day that I'm not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Paul did not hesitate to preach what was profitable, even when it was hard. He went out of his way to declare and to teach people to turn to God and to put their faith in Jesus. And I believe that one of the marks of faithful ministry is preaching the word faithfully, even when it's hard. And sometimes it comes with tears, as I've said, and that leads us to Jesus, because God works through God's word, and God delights in exalting Christ. The third quality is that Paul guarded the church carefully. And so we read, keep watch over yourselves, and over all the flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, the shepherd, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease day or night to warn everyone with tears. Now, Paul understood what was at stake. He knew the immense value of the church, that it had been obtained with Christ's own blood. Christ died to save them, so he will live to protect them. He knew the church as immensely valuable as it is, that the church is always in perpetual danger, and that's why he cared for the church's spiritual condition so carefully. He knew that the church is always in danger of believing lies and departing from the truth, and that's why he guarded them so carefully. And I believe that in many ways, that's what Father did here among us. He, you know, he has taken, you know, great care in ministering to us. I think when I look back at his sermon of Tuesday past, 
where he was speaking about Colenso and how he made it was just it was really absolutely stunning but that's not all the fourth quality is that Paul lived among them honorably and I read again to you I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing but you can't get into mine father <laughs> you know yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions in all this, I have given you an example that by such work, we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive. People could look at Paul's life and they could see that he lived with integrity, that he was above board when it came to financial matters, that he worked hard, that he was generous with his money. But the question this afternoon is, what does a faithful ministry look like? It looks like serving God selflessly. It looks like preaching the word faithfully. It looks like guarding the spiritual condition of others carefully and living honorably. And when you found someone who does those things, then you found a faithful minister. And I believe that that's what we've had for 18 months. 19 months that's the record that Paul takes with him and it's the same record that the Reverend Adrian takes with him as well and so people of Good Shepherd Grassy Park when you get to enjoy this kind of ministry you have experienced a blessing from God and that is what father has been he's been a tremendous blessing to us in the in the 19th month that he's been here don't miss the opportunity to praise God for the faithful ministry that we've been able to enjoy for the past 19 months. Praise God also that God raises up faithful priests and pastors who love God and are willing to serve God's flock faithfully. And what a gift from God who loves and cares for God's church. That's the first thing that Reverend Adrian takes with him. He takes with him a good track record. But that's not the only thing that he's taking. Like Paul, he's also taking something else with him. He's also leaving, as he leaves us here and he goes to Elgin, he's also leaving with a mission. Let me read again. And now, as a captive to the Spirit, I'm on my way to Jerusalem. In Adrian's case, he's going to Elgin, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. Paul was leaving not because it was comfortable. He was leaving because he felt constrained by the Spirit. And he knew that the road ahead for him would be difficult, but it didn't matter. His goal was not to live a comfortable life, but to finish the course in the ministry that God had given to him, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And so we ask this afternoon, why is Reverend Adrian leaving? Well, firstly, he's probably he's leaving because Bishop has said, your time has come and you need to go somewhere else. And of course, we need a priest out there somewhere else. But he's going because he has a mission. And his mission is to continue the ministry of the church in the parish of Algen. And here it was luxury. He has one worship center here. There he's going to go to a church with many altars and many worship centers. And of course, he'll be assisted, as you know, by the Reverend Eunice Davids, who was my curate or assistant priest when I was in my previous parish of Gredrakenstein. I don't think that imprisonment awaits him. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> But can you see what Paul is taking with him? 
He's taking with him a good track record and he's taking with him a mission. And that's what Reverend Adrian takes with him today. But as he leaves, and tomorrow he'll be moving. No, Father, is that right? He'll be moving tomorrow. And as he leaves, and you'll have for Father last day, no? You leave him, let him pack and leave. But as he leaves, we're sending two things with him. The same things, two things that the Ephesian elders sent with Paul. First, we're sending Father our love. Verse 36, when he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them, and I'm sure there's going to be much weeping today also. They embraced Paul and they kissed him. And there's something deeply personal in the relationship between a priest and the people. Because there is this relationship goes beyond the professional. Because love enters that picture. But the flip side of that love is also pain. And when a church loves a faithful minister, that church, and I think that's what we are going through now, that church also experiences some pain when that minister leaves. And that's what we are experiencing today. We would love to have him here with us, but there's work elsewhere. But they also sent something else with Paul, and we are also doing that today. Secondly, we are sending our release. So we read, grieving especially because of what they had said, that they would not see him again, they brought him to the ship. He's not going by ship. I can a car fat and I can Elgin to ride. They, of course, weren't very happy that Paul was leaving. They expressed their sadness. But then they went with him as he left for the next phase of his mission. And that's what we want to do today. But we will go to Elgin on the 1st of July when Father is instituted as the rector of Elgin. And I'm sure that somewhere in that service, Bishop is going to say to us, Los no for Father ye, and gaan jylle terug. Okay? You'll hear that Bishop loves to do that, particularly at services of institution. She will tell us, those of us who are visiting from Grassy Park, Dankie dat jylle voor wie in toe gebring het, maar los om nou, dat hy ingaan met sy werk. Right? Father, we are grateful for your ministry. You become precious to us. And we are sad to see you go. But we also want to see today as a commissioning, as a blessing, as you go to the next phase of your ministry. And we support you. We support you with our prayers and also with our well wishes. Yes, we are sad, but we are also excited about, about what God is going to do in your life. And we pray that God will bless you and work through you just as God has done so here in this place. Thank you very much, Father, for your faithful ministry. Thank you also for following God's call. And we love you. And we're sad that you're going. But we have to release you. And we bless you as we release you. And we pray God's blessing on your ministry. I think that if I just get away from the notes for a while and just reflect, you came here, as I said earlier, when we were still in the throes of COVID, and once we had moved out of COVID, you really inserted yourself into the life and the witness and the ministry of the church here. 
And there's one thing that I'll be eternally grateful to you, Father, and that is your ministry among the young people. You started up that youth that we were struggling to start up again. You started up that Friday night youth, that traditional Friday night youth. You gave the young people the space that they just needed to be themselves. And sometimes it's a skin to know and then but you managed. You also managed to put together a group of young adults that would meet at your home on a Wednesday evening. You were also involved very much with the ministry of the service guild. We would find you here on a Monday evening when they are practicing. We also know that you loved um, the hymns particularly, and so you would also sometimes be with the choir when they were practicing. We're going to miss you, particularly when we get to our next Good Friday, because you were the one for the last two Good Fridays who gave us the passion play and did it so well, and it just fitted so wonderfully into our Good Friday services. And so there are many things about you. I enjoy just spending time with you. Thank you for your willingness when I needed to do something else. Thank you for your willingness just to step in, whether it was office hours or anything else, whether it was a pastoral visit that I couldn't get to. Thank you very much. I really appreciated that. Um, I know I haven't been the Archdeacon for too long, but thank you for just being there, that I could just phone you and say, Father, can you go down to him? You know, if I wasn't able to. And thank you also for the times that we spent together. And I think the one thing that really stands out for me about your ministry is, of course, your preaching. I think it's key. Um, and I think the, the good thing about that, and that's maybe the good thing about a team ministry, is that when you have clergy, fellow clergy working with you, you also then make sure that you check up. <laughs> and that was the good thing. That's the good thing about having you here. That I needed to say, nah, 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 deal. I think I never made so I said, no, 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 I like he was here. He was here on fire for the Messiah. <laughs> and so I think, thank you, Father. I, you know, I've been a priest for 24 years. So sometimes we can become very complacent. And I think just having a young, fresh-faced priest, um, just having someone alongside me was just good. Because it also said to me, brother, Jared, no. <laughs> <laughs> so let me conclude. <laughs> I also want to thank you, Karen. I want to thank you because Father is single. <laughs> well, I think so. <laughs> um, but thank you for always just being there, for accompanying him, for just being here sometimes, and, and we really appreciate that and also to the rest of the family. You're, you're no longer strangers to us. We've, we've seen you here on many occasions. And so we pray that God continues to bring God's self-glory through you and that many in the parish of Elgin will experience the transforming grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The psalmist assures us that we are always in God's embrace wherever we go. So my beloved brother, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. You can ask the gospel band to sing for us now. We stand as we sing with them the potter's hand.
Let us pray. The prayers can be followed on page three of the service booklet or on the screens. God feeds us with the word of life. Let us pray for our brother, the Reverend Adrian Gordon, that God may continue to nourish him with God's living word. For God to fill his heart with compassion, his hands with strength to do the Spirit's will, and his mouth to speak Christ's peace to all, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all ministers, for the Holy Spirit to bring, to bring to completion the good work begun by them, in them by Christ, we pray to the Lord. For this community, and particularly this parish, for comfort in the absence of our friend and renewed commitment to the vision of God's reign, we pray to the Lord. For the communities of St. Michael and all angels, Elgin with Holy Family, Appletwaith, St. Mary of Bethany, Greymead, St. Ari, St. Andrews, Aris Kral, and Akinoff, who will receive Reverend Adrian for a gracious welcome, a generosity of spirit, and genuine care for him and his family, we pray to the Lord. For those who long to hear the word of God, for those who are poor and hungry, and those without work or companionship, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, open our eyes to your continuing purpose and renewing power. And in the power of your spirit, so help us to see each apparent conclusion as the start of a fresh chapter in life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now have a trip down memory lane.
ਇੱਕ ਸਾਕਲਾ ਨਾ ਉਸ ਫੋਹਰ ਨੇ ਆਸ ਪੈਸ਼ਨ ਪਲੇ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਸੀ ਆਈ ਪ੍ਰਿਕ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਸੀ ਇਨਵੋਲਵ ਇਨ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਆਲ ਆਫ ਅ ਸਡਨ ਟੂ ਬਟ ਆਈ ਵੀ ਐਕਟ ਟੂ ਗੈਟ ਇਕ ਕਰੇ ਆਲਾ ਖੁਦ ਨੂੰ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਕ ਸੋ ਵਾਟ ਆਲ ਦ ਵਾਸ ਆਲ we are going to call on the liturgical dancers to to minister to father uh, i know you do you want father to sit somewhere where do you want father to sit in the aisle okay father we we'll do it in the aisle sit where do you want him to sit in the aisle where huh Okay so I will leave for a minute. How do you want the chair here? Yes. Father in the middle. As I said. Well, he can act so I'm sure he can dance as well.
we come to that time in the service where we'd like to do some presentations. And could we just ask, we don't want long speeches, right? Those who have been assigned by the organization to represent them, you come and you just, Father, I think you need to come into the sanctuary now. Maybe bring the chair with you, you can sit. And uh, maybe you can just sit, I don't know if you want to sit there or when you want to sit. All right, okay. But we ask that we, that we have no long speeches because uh, we still want to have some refreshments after the service. So, uh, I'm sure Father will come down to you if you're the one that must do the presentation, okay? But um, we're going to call on the organizations to come forward now, and then that will be concluded by the church wardens who will do their presentation, and then we will just conclude. We'll ask, we'll get a response from Father, and then we'll conclude the service. So, who's up first? The lay ministers, are you up first? Come, lay ministers. If there's any speaking to be done, just go to the elected mic, and um, you can do say just say what you need to say. All those who are to who are speaking on behalf of the um, organisations, uh, you can start gathering the side, and it just makes it a little bit easier for us. If you are representing your organisation, just come and stand here. As Father said, we're not going to talk long. Father Adrian. It gives the lay ministers the greatest pleasure to be able to hand over something to you that we know you are going to put to good use. Everybody wanted to know, what are we going to get, Father? And it was said, Father, just wear black shirts. <laughs> and then we thought, no, man, we're not going to go for black shirts. And, and I was forced to phone Father. We were told when he's on leave, we mustn't phone him. But I was forced to phone him just to get his measurements, Father. <laughs> but, Father, um, the lay ministers wish you well in your new vineyard. You're not only going to a new vineyard, but you're going to be in the orchards as well. <laughs> so we hope that when we come and visit you, that you'll be able to give us some apples that you are going to pick. <laughs> that you must go and pick. <laughs> Father, you've shared many firsts with us. I'll never forget your first baptism was at Good Shepherd. And it was so special because your mom was with you when you celebrated the first baptism. And it was only one child that was baptized, and it was a, a relative of mine. Father, thank you for being a leader, for being an inspiration to all of us in our lay ministers' meetings, in the little get-togethers we had. You've had your first washing of the feet at Good Shepherd, your first prostration here, uh, Good Friday. So it was lots of first. And we know that when you go to Elgin, <laughs> everything there is going to be your first. Carry our richest blessings and all our love with you. God's grace go with you. Just, just hang it over the altar, Father, so it's, or we'll put it somewhere over the altar rail, unless a family member would like to collect it on his behalf. Right. Okay. Are you okay, Thora? Right. Um, who's next? Neville, you can come. What do you say to a man, a person, who has done so much for this church? Words cannot express, but Father Adrian, on behalf of the Church Men's Society, 
I just want to present to you two small little tokens of all the appreciation and things that you have done, not only for the Church Men's Society here, but all over. May God continue to bless you in all your endeavors. You will surely be missed here at Good Shepherd, as many of those that are still coming up here will say the same, same words, but I wanted to ring into your ears, not just on the one and out by the other, it will stay with you for the rest of your life. So on behalf of the Church Men's Society, of the Good Shepherd Church here in Grassy Park, just to present to you with, you can show it to the people. Yeah, do some need to slam to father. Base it money for Allah. And also a small token of, you know, of our appreciation. What I want to do now is I'm going to say, I'm going to surprise you. I want to do a smaller song for you. <laughs> when no one else can understand it, when anything we do is wrong, you give us hope and consolation. You give us strength to carry on. And you're always there to lend a hand in everything you do. That's the wonder, the wonder of you. God bless. Got the choir? Yeah? Fine. Good afternoon, brethren and sisters. Uh, the first time I heard about Father Adrian. It was always just spoken about how young this priest is. <laughs> well, if you stand, as he's standing next to me, it actually emphasizes how young he is. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm 71 years old. And when I sat there, the sermons he gave, the inspiration he gave, and we are blessed with priests. They can engage at any level. And they are also quite fluent in Cape Flats. So we can never say the message that came across went over my head. After the service, you would have this soul searching. And it will go on to Friday. And on Sunday, but Father Jovi of you on. In the next week, you again, Yiltemal Om Gekrap. Father, we appreciate that. Father used to come and sit with the choir. Never intruded. He was there, and he also wasn't there. It's a good thing because you're now territorial choir masters are. <laughs> I also looked at the rapport he had with the youth. Father, I. I started off, we had a principal, mm -hmm. and he said the following. What you say goes a long way. What you do goes even further. But what you are goes the furthest. And this is what we all felt. We are inspired by who you are. You didn't have to tell us who you are. We experienced. Mm -hmm. May God be with you. And as we are going to sing, May the rose rise to meet you.
We are going to miss you. But Father Joe left and he came back. <laughs> so there is still hope. Thank you. Is it the Mother's Union now? Right, we have the Mother's Union. This is what father has to cope with. Gebreklik is ook nog daarbij. What else can I say? Father, most of the people have said what I wanted to say, but I must say that the sermons you have preached have really been food for thought. The way you expounded on the lives of the saints and the bishops of old has made me a bit poorer because now I had to go and buy books <laughs> because it was so interesting. And my children have banned me from buying any more books. But I said, only these two men, only these two, about the saints and the bishops. It was so interesting on a Tuesday morning when uh, we celebrated the life of a saint or a bishop, because you expounded so beautifully on their lives. And Father, I must say, the way you interacted with the youth of our parish was really heartwarming to all of us. The prayer from the mothers is just a psalm that, the first psalm I think, that all mothers teach their children is Psalm 23. Go with the Lord your shepherd, and as Diana said, go and win many more souls for God's kingdom in the orchards of Algin and that beautiful chapel at Applethwaite. God bless you, Father. Stay with me, my matriarch, <laughs> and to win is our matriarch in the Mother's Union. So, Father, although it's hard to say goodbye, um, as uh, um, Bert has just mentioned, you came here and you sat in our choir practice, and I remember as a child in each house you had that little frame, God, Christ is the quiet listener to every conversation, but you were the listener to each note. And you sat there quietly, observed quietly, and sometimes wrote your sermons and continued to be a blessing to others. And um, your profound blessings has really touched my heart and tugs at my heartstrings each time you speak. So continue to touch the souls where you are going. And God bless you. And I will forever hold dear the quiet day the Mother's Union mm -hmm. had in, uh, um, at All Saints and that saint that you taught us about. God bless you. Divine has written a prayer for you and goodbye with blessings from the Mother's Union. Thank you very much. Do we need a right? Service Guild? Right, we've got the service guild next. Any other organizations? You just can just come closer, then we can see who you are. Yes, Father. Father Joe said it so beautifully. So everybody else also, and we had our moment already. But yes, 
We just want to wish you well. As we told you, we know we need to let you go so that you can grow and that God can have his way. And so continue to allow God to be you. Don't change for anybody. Mm. We'll miss that crying. It was good. I haven't seen Father Joe emotional. I think this is the first time I've seen him to that extent today. And so yes, you've left your mark. <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, we love all our clergy. Yeah? Like God has no favorites. And that was you. There was no favorites. We were all your favorites. And um, yeah, and you're all unique in your own way. And so we are left with that beautiful memories that you implanted in our hearts. And thank you for that times and Monday evenings, you know, with the youth, it was a very challenging period. And in your quiet, gentle way, just being here, just your presence being here, and some Mondays where I could also just offload. Thank you. Thank you for that. That meant a lot. It was very overwhelming times, and then we would just have that moment where I could just let go and you just listen. So thank you for your prayers, because I know that carried us through. So God bless, and go and shine. <laughs> And then just to Mrs. Gordon, Gordon Senior, Karen, there's <laughs> just something small from us, just to say thank you to you for your support, our Father, but also you always supported us, and you were always there, and you were always so loving and caring, and so thank you so much, just a small token. Um, hello, Father. Um, <laughs> everyone said what I also wanted to say, so it's a bit hectic. Um, I just want to say thank you on behalf of all the Service Guild members for the laughs, the cries, um, the good days and the bad days. And um, this is for Father. Can imagine? <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Uh, Father, thank you for inspiring everyone, whether it be in a service guild, just everyone in general. Um, Ryan and I, um, one day we had a conversation, and I told Ryan, you know, Ryan, I want to be exactly like Father, <laughs> exactly like him. I just, I just wanted to say that, and I hope you have an amazing day. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? The youth, all right. And the band, is it the youth and the band? All right. Hello, everybody. Um, I just want to keep this short and sweet. So I was going to call all you to come up, but I just want to ask them if they could all stand, if all the youth members could stand for me, please. So on behalf of the youth members, I just want to say thank you very much, Father Adrian. I think you've completely changed all of our lives, bringing us all together, being a family. And I know there were some aggressive times where we were like really aggressive. <laughs> and there was times where the topic would be mental health and then we would have nuclear bombs in it some yes. way. <laughs> we just want to say thank you so much, Father. And I pray that we may be like you and help others to the best of our ability. And also on behalf of the band up there, we also want to th say thank you for also coming in on some nights and staying and worshiping with us there. And, I pray, and we pray that you may just, have, that God may give you the strength and that he may protect you when you're there in Algin. And I pray that you may have a blessed time there, Father. Thank you very much. Um, 
you are five years younger than me, and uh, yet spiritually you have always been my leader. Um, you have been my hero, and I am happy and I feel blessed that the youth of this parish will have been able to experience that same type of empathy, that same type of relatability, um, and you truly are a man led by love. I have, you know, seen frustration. I've never seen anger, though. And, uh, you know, in the Bible, it teaches, or Jesus teaches us to, uh, to teach and lead with, with love, and you have always done that. Um, I'm going to miss you. But on behalf of the youth, uh, we wanted to have a youth camp, but it was a problem, so now we can have one in Algen. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, we all love you. Friday nights when you will be the same, but don't worry, we will all be here, and please come visit us. Where is the Sunday school? Good afternoon, everyone. Father Adrian, on behalf of Sunday School, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm telling Marsha, no, don't touch me or pat me, I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, I think we just want to come and thank you for everything you've done for, for our young people, but not all, just, just for the young people, also the parents of the young people. We could come to you with anything, anything that our, our, our teenagers, our children struggling with, and you were there for us. And so, um, God puts um, priests in our lives um, to leave footprints in our hearts. And your footprint will forever be embedded in our hearts. So this is not goodbye, just so long. And so the kids have um, prepared a little poem for you. Dear Father Aiden, thank you Father Aiden for all you do. Your work, your kindness, and your, your kindness and your guidance too. You point us to Jesus. You walk the walk. We usually listen when you talk. <laughs> we think you're special. We think you're great. And we will pray for you every day. Father Adrian, we have got your back. But now we'll cut you a little slack. We truly think that you're the best. And thank you for all that you invest. God bless you, Father Adrian. Okay, Kim. Reverend Adrian, so many have, have come to say goodbye or farewell or be seeing you. Today is a testimony to your ministry and to all the lives you have touched, and especially within the Anglican Women's Fellowship. And it's not by coincidence. God knew what he was doing when he was sending you to Good Shepherd Grassy Park. On behalf of the, Anglicans, the Anglican Women's Fellowship, be assured that you have impacted each one of us. You've embraced us and supported us. You've led our quiet days post-COVID, and every member has learned something new. You've challenged us, and you've even called out our members during sermons. <laughs> Marsha and Leslie will forever remember that, but we know it's all in love. Today, we've, we've come to give thanks to God for who you are and what you mean to us. You have shown us faithfulness and unselfish service. You've shown what it is to be Christ-like and to invoke new attitudes and changes and thoughts. We will miss you, and while you'll be over the mountain, you'll be in our prayers. The memories will be forever remain fond and dear. May you continually experience and enjoy the grace of God in life and in ministry. Go with our love, united in prayer, service, and love. <laughs>
<laughs> For the Adrian, um, I just wanted to say one thing um, about your sermons, how it touches me so much, especially when you um, cry about it, even though, um, like, if you haven't gone through it yet, you feel for other people if they have gone through it, and it is just very inspiring to me. And um, on behalf of the liturgical dances, uh, we just wanted to say thank you for everything that you have done, um, for the light you put over all the youth in the church, and yeah, thank you. The wife. Adrian, I say to the break and don't get on ones. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and don't worry, um, I'll be brief, and it's not the rewind of the Passion Play. Um, as the Passion Play participants and recipients as well, we would like to present this gift of appreciation to Father Adrian. Thank you for your guidance and creative and spiritual freedom while we prepare for the play. Father has been the most passive director or choreographer, <laughs> even though we haven't worked with many, um, but he's been very, very chilled throughout it. Um, thank you for your sense of empathy and love for God's people, and may your passion for the work of the Lord be continually guided by the Holy Spirit as you lead the children of God. I'm going to end by saying that you have set a high standard for the people of Good Shepherd. And may those that walk in your footsteps do it for the purpose of serving the Lord as you have done. And yes, Father Joe, you have a lot of work to do. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can be Nicodemus that well. <laughs> but also the people of Algen don't know what wait, what's waiting for them <laughs> for Good Friday. But thank you so much, Father, and may you be blessed on your new journey, what God has prepared for you. And we send you with so much love. Thank you. Um, can Mommy please come to the front? Ik denk dat maar samen vader. Ik ga naar de kerkwoordens nu. We zijn de kerkwoordens. Good afternoon, everyone. Father Adrian, it's a hard act to follow after all the speeches, but I hope I can do justice with my few words. There's a saying that goes, there's a time for coming and a time for going. It is sad to see you go, but at the same time glad 
to know that you were appointed as rector of all St. Michael's All Angel, Elton. You came as a young priest and leaving us as a mature and wise priest who left many beautiful memories and footprints in the hearts of the Good Shepherd family. You are indeed ready to take your ministry to the next level. On behalf of the rector, wardens, parish council, and the parishioners of Good Shepherd Church, I want to sincerely thank you for your ministry and many inspiring and emotional sermons, as well as the exceptional work you did in our community. Thank you for your love and care and support which you so freely gave to all of us, especially the youth. Thank you also for your family, especially your mom, who supports you in your special ministry. We want to wish you well in your ministry as rector in the vineyard of the Elden area. We pray God's continued blessings over you and your family and trust that God will guide and lead you in the way forward as shepherd of your new congregation. Thank you once again for everything that you have done for the Good Shepherd community. And as a token of our appreciation, we would like to bless you with a small gift. So go in peace, go in love, and go in joy. Thank you. God bless. Good afternoon. I'd like to call on Karen Gordon. <laughs> Just come stand next to me. <laughs> We've heard so much about Father, Father Adrian Gordon today. You know, that's the famous saying, behind every successful man is a strong woman. One, he doesn't have a wife. <laughs> Two, he doesn't have a girlfriend, but check Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so behind a very inspiring priest, we have a very powerful, inspiring, encouraging mother who has backed him through his entire journey. So whatever and however he's encouraged all of us and grown with us, where does it come from? I just want to know one thing. Did she teach him to throw rocks? <laughs> Concrete and everything else? Don't answer that. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to thank Mrs. Gordon for always assisting. She's assisted us in so many places, with the Sunday school, with Linton, consulting. Not only that, but many of the beautiful flower arrangements and assistance through the flower festivals that we've had. She's always here. Whenever we need her, we can call on her. So, I'm keeping it short. Even though Father's leaving today, doesn't mean that Mrs. Gordon is still welcome here <laughs> to give us guidance, <laughs> consult with us, and teach us to do flower arrangements. <laughs> so, Mrs. Gordon, thank you very, very much for what you had inspired your son. Not Father I did, your son. And always being there for us as well, for giving us motivation, for talking to us, to spending with the youth, the seniors, and everybody. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate thank it. You too. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Hi, it's me again. <laughs> uh, mami wil nie gepraat het, want sy sê amal sy oos klaas so glaserig en uh, sy is bang, sy gaan huil oor die mic. Um, but on behalf of Sylvia Kastoor, she just wanted to say thank you to Father for his caring nature and especially for the sick. Um, and thank you that you have come to visit her when she was very ill at home. So please go well. Before we ask Father to respond, I believe the youth wants to sing something. <laughs> so, uh, so off you come, off you go, youth, off you go, off you go. Father Adrian, let's move this Apparently, they rewrote that when I was ordained, Father. <laughs> <laughs> Father, in you reading Acts 20 today, I was quite worried because there's a story right before that piece of scripture you chose where Paul preached a man to sleep and he fell out the window. <laughs> But I'm glad you didn't say any of my sermons spoke you to sleep in your time here. I don't know, perhaps you're still asleep through it all. But yes, um, where do I begin? It's been a roller coaster of a 19 months. Yes, many, many firsts. 
here at Good Shepherd, which I will cherish deeply within my ministry. The, I said at Strandfontein that I, I came to find my voice as a priest. But here I think I came to find my personality as a priest. And I, I often refer to my time in Berdastop as a parish worker with Father Pitt Manar. And Father Pitt told me when we drove around and often just reflected together that his, his mission as a priest, especially in Berdastop, was that when he was finished as, as rector there, he wanted to be known as the happiest and most friendly priest in the community. And I try to carry that within me. And one thing I've heard from many people that I, I've got a certain smile, a certain smirk on my face that I don't have much control over. It just happens. <laughs> but I've heard it, it is welcoming to many, and it tends to soften the blow of many things, especially when I throw those bricks and concrete, according to you, Greg. Because by you, Greg. But yes, my goal in preaching was never to throw stones. My sister in Africa say, as is kunio pas. Terekom an. And yes, I come, I came as a young priest. I will remain a young priest. But that, my age had nothing to do with my faith. And it has only grown more in my time here. I have always tried to emphasize my humanity more than my priestly nature, because I am a, a human being before I am a priest, and I pray that I never lose that, that it is never me that the glory needs to go to. It is never me up here speaking, but the Spirit working through me. That is our prayer, so who are we to doubt the Spirit's work? I am humbled by the reactions to the way I preach. You know, you never quite know as a priest if you're getting through to people, but often in sermons you get that dead quiet where you can hear that pin drop and then kill the devil for you. But I pray that Father Joe, that Jaini lacks Raki. That you remain true to the word you bring. That you continue to pray for the spirits leading you in interpretation, in relevance, in speaking the word the way the people need the word. And I pray that for me too. To the organizations, the first one I, I had interactions with the choir. I, for those who don't know, am the son of an organist. So that was home for me. In my home parish, there's this little chair, it's not even really a chair, it's a half a bunky next to the organ in the back of the church. And that was my seat for 14, 15, 16 years of my life. So die uki da achter. On a Thursday night often became my home. And thank you for allowing me into your space. Andrew, not because you were the choir choir master, 
but simply that you allowed me to be, you allowed me to be inspired by you, by your voices, by your ministry, and by your love, that we could always share a time of laughter, a time of praising, a time of prayer, and a time of worship. Andrew, you've pushed me as a young priest to see what my voice can do, Mahaa Andrew. <laughs> I see for me. <laughs> but thank you for all you have done here, for the organizations, the AWF, the MU, the CMS, for always allowing me there too to take you through some of the things going on in my mind, especially at quiet days. <laughs> you know I don't do quiet in quiet days. The AWF were very shocked in that first quiet day that I brought my mother along to do laughter therapy with them. <laughs> it was blindly still a quiet day. <laughs> but yes, that you allowed me to there even have a first in leading a quiet day in trying to make sense of our spirituality, our ministry in listening to God's voice to God speaking to us, the band, the service guild, the Sunday school, the youth, the young adults, everyone has said it. Thank you for coming along on the trip and trying to stay with what I wanted to do as a youth ministry. Thank you to those who stepped up as leaders these last few months, you must have felt like you were dangling along, that I didn't even reply to messages anymore. And I pray that you go on. I told you Wednesday night and Thursday night, don't even think about me anymore. Let God guide you. Phone me if you need to, but only if you need to. <laughs> but you know where I am. You are always welcome in Elgin and just to have a chat or to come into the vineyard and into the orchard with me, let us apples at pluck. The lay ministers, you have been a great joy in being with as we again refreshed our ministry after COVID in leading the people pastorally in this place passion play groups. Sean, that you need to give to my mother. She was a Sunday school teacher for 45 years of her life, so there I learned, there I was in many a passion play, and it is merely me taking that inspiration and ministry further. But to the, the two groups that were, thank you for going along in my mind as well as Shanae said, I was the most chilled director ever. Shanae, I, I like to think I'm the most chilled person ever. <laughs> that we allow the spirit to work, that we think we have a vision, but let the year as a To the Tuesday group, my father, I often said it, and let me say it here also on the live stream, my favorite group of people and I hope in Elgin it becomes the same. The elderly, a group I carry dear in my heart, something I heard from one of them, Father, for you I my last pension. <laughs> but an absolute joy to just sit in your company Tuesday mornings after service to learn from your wisdom, to experience your love in Yala Malachit Uk will always be something I carry with me to those that always brought food as well. I've I've said no for these last few months, but as you see like seen of my slideshow. My vangikis was lekker on. Ma, Father Richard, thank you that Oskon can jam it and force recreate. 
but thank you for your love in that as well in always feeling the need that there's this young man that's sitting alone at home say maas fe fa no ma fin ek kan sien kan nie kos maak nie so kom ons maak hom kos to the soup kitchen and all the ministries that they were thank you for allowing me there also to spend time with you and just to pastora i'm still waiting for that apron <laughs> I always believed no matter where I was that my place was serving the people. I tell people this often I wanted to be a butler in a previous life. <laughs> But I always wanted to be in the kitchen. You'll see even at the coffee bar I really go sit down. That's the place where I feel my ministry needs to be. to the councils and the wardens in the time I was here thank you for your compassion your love in always checking in in always worrying in terms of maintenance or what's happening at the house sorry for the constant phone calls from the alarm company when I wasn't at home but thank you for making sure I was safe for making sure I was cared for and for allowing me space in your homes as well and for just guiding this parish in their administrative side of life to father joe father it's been a privilege to again sit under your wing and learn from you as i said when i came here when you were my ordinary director and then too when i served as parish worker under you i always practiced my father joe voice <laughs> <laughs> and in hearing it very often i i i gave up some time ago but i feel i've i've developed my own and i hope it has the same impact that yours does Thank you for the phone calls, the moments that when things bothered you or bothered me that we could just talk it out, laugh it out, go for a coffee or pop in somewhere for something to eat and for you guiding without even trying to guide. I I've learned a multitude of of lessons of booklets that I I cherish dearly my emails are start of all the different liturgies that you can be assured will be used in Elgin I just need to remember to change Grassy Park to St Michael and all <laughs> angels else <laughs> but thank you for all you've been and as you continue as rector as archdeacon you've been terribly busy and i feel sorry for you these next 3 weeks without an assistant but i know that god will lead you and guide you and you with the strength and the leading of the holy spirit will be able to do what god requires of you and what the church requires of you too lastly the family and friends that have always been by my side that have now caused me to need a moving truck to move with by how they filled my house with furniture and cutlery and crockery and the like thank you for always 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 being there with that be just to pop in and listen to your voice when the church gets too much for me not to be father adrian but to be ad for me to take off the collar and just be for that i am eternally grateful you let go wach for that no but yes i i pray that God continue to gift me with this that I never lose 
the passion of the love of Christ and that this vulnerability and humanity that I give to you, you may embrace in your own lives, that you don't put up the mask, that you don't try and be strong for whoever, but when you need to, let it out. Let it flow, let it heal you, let it touch you, let the Spirit use it to cleanse you. And my wish for you is that you may know God. You will seek to know God more and that you may always know that you have somewhere in the world a young priest that is praying for you. And amen on that. I'm not going to make you sit with your hands in your laps and <laughs> close your eyes for a moment. Father Joe, work the field prat and nonsense prat. Thank you. Remain there, Father. Remain there. My brother, Reverend Adrian, your ministry among us is coming to its conclusion. We now thank God for your ministry here. Loving and most gracious God, your glory fills the whole creation and your presence we find in every place. We thank you for the power and support given to this parish during the ministry of our brother, Reverend Adrian Gordon. We thank you for the gifts given to him, for your guidance and direction and for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit poured down abundantly on all of us. We thank you for the members of his family and for the support you have given them. We bless you for the faithfulness and devotion we have witnessed in your servant, your servant which has glorified your name. As he leaves to the new congregation of St. Michael and all angels in Elgin, surround him with your spirit. Give us the courage to release him to a new call and bless our remembering of the work that has been done among us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear members and friends of Good Shepherd Grassy Park, do you now release Reverend Adrian Gordon as your assistant priest as he sets out on the next step in his journey as a priest in God's holy church? Together we say, we release Reverend Adrian as our assistant priest. Bless him in his new ministry. Gracious and loving God, your love for us is everlasting. Yeah, us, us to look with faith, hope, and joy to the future which rests in your care. Guide and strengthen us as we cherish these memories and help us as we move, move in new directions until that time comes when we are completely one with you and one with each other in your heavenly kingdom. We ask this, this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask the choir to minister.
going to ask you to stand now. And ask you to, Father, can you join me here? Yes, Father. You can just stand there. All right. We can just. Yeah. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So now we'll ask Father to conclude the service by blessing us. So may the God of peace, who by the blood of the eternal covenant brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that good shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work, working in you that which is pleasing and good. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we sing our recessional hymn, Please do not leave. We have uh, some refreshments for you in the hall, okay? So you can just go through. Thank you very much to all those who have provided the refreshments. Okay, all right. Father says that there is also some bookmarks for everyone. Uh, as you exit, you can just, I think these are there. That's right, uh, they, we have some there, and we also have some of that, that exit. So please, as you as you exit, please do take uh, a bookmark to remember. And then also just remember that Father's um, institution is on Saturday the 1st of July at St. Michael and All Angels in Elgin. And that is at three o'clock in the afternoon. We have made a bus available. And those who have indicated, you can start paying your monies for your seat, which is 80 Rand. And of course, um, the bus leaves at 12.30 for the service, all right? And then, of course, Father will have his first service on Sunday, the 2nd of July, all right? Um, thank you very much to the choir, but just a notice with regard to the choir, they'll be singing at the cathedral on Sunday, the 9th of July. That's the evening service? Yes. So please do go and support the choir members and the guests, choristers who are here, uh, because they will be, it's an even song, is that right? It's even song at the cathedral, St. George's Cathedral. Is that right? St. George's Cathedral, eh? Because we also have our own cathedral, in Mitzika Mark. <laughs> St. George's Cathedral uh, on Sunday the 9th of July. What time is that, Andrew? At 6 p.m. All right, so that's, and then also, I forgot to say this morning, you know the second uh, Sunday in July? is a Seafarer Sunday, we will be having Seafarer Sunday in the first service, okay? So I'm telling you that as well, okay? Right, we'll sing our final hymn.